So if you still want to continue to study Buddhist scriptures, then you can have them very easily, or any other religious scriptures. It's very easy nowadays, they're at your fingertips. And I brought many of them to your attention already. I told many Buddhist stories. I explained many Buddhist sutras as well. I wish I could have had more time for that. But I also brought many of other religious teachings into your knowledge. I do what I can as a small, fragile woman. It's not because I think uh, I'm a teacher that I have a duty to do that, but also because of gratitude to God Almighty and all the masters who have sacrificed so much, including their lives, you know, in gruesome ways, brutal ways, by the treatment of the humans in this world. But these humans, they're not really human. Whoever treats the master badly or says bad things about them, that's because they are possessed by demons. And nowadays, oh, so many humans are possessed by demons or ghosts of any kind, not just zealous ghosts or zealous demons. These are mostly taken care of already. It's just some of them still in human bodies, and you would never know. They could look like a monk, and they could look sweet and smile and all that, but even they could be possessed by demons. I forgot the name of that sutra. After Ananda had repeated the question three times, the Buddha told him, After my nirvana, when the Dharma is about to extinct, the five mortal sins will follow the world, and the demonic way will flourish exceedingly. The demons will become monks to spoil and wreck my way. They will wear like mundane people's dress, also with sash for monks. They will delight to show off multicolored precept sash or kashaya. They will drink wine and eat meat, killing living things in their desire for fine flavors. They will not have compassionate minds and will hate and envy each other. The ultimate extinction of the Dharma Sutra. There are so many sutras that I study. I can't remember the names because mostly they're with Sanskrit titles and not easy to remember, except like the Universal Doha uh, Sutra, you know, Kwanin Bodhisattva and Amitabha Buddha, because I practiced them before I became enlightened before I had the fortune to re-encounter the Kuan Yin method again. Yeah, or Medicine Buddha, or Kristikawa Buddha Sutra, and many other sutras, of course. These are easier to remember. Other sutras are more difficult to remember the title. But I studied many when I was younger. That's why I forgot now, okay? At least, ah, oh my God, time passes so quickly. 40 or 50 years ago. Oh, I studied when I was very little, eight, ten years old already, thanks to my grandma, yeah, who reminded me. And then I studied because I went to temple. Like some days we had temples, uh, you know, like boy, girl, scouts, but Buddhist scouts. And we learned with the masters of that temple and the things. I was curious as a child and my grandma recited Buddha's name every evening. I told you already, yeah? So I'm thankful, you know, I'm thankful to anyone. Anyone whom you think of on this planet. I owe my gratitude to them. That sister of yours from China also sometimes organized a lot of uh, a charity in uh, other countries. And I also support her with the financial help to the chip in so that she can do her charity job and she meditates a lot and her brother is also a very, very devoted monk, good monk, okay? There are many more good monks. They might not be very high level, but they are good in their heart and they're really aiming to be enlightened, to go back to Buddha's land or to become Buddha again. So never, never ever offend any monk or slander them because sometimes gossip it's not always true. People gossip a lot about me. I don't have time to consider even to defend myself. Yeah, life is short anyway. I try to do all my best to help, not to take too much trouble about arguing or defending myself or clearing my name, whatever, let it be. Imagine Buddha lost his toe. Lord Jesus Christ, 
was nailed on the cross. Yeah. Who are we to think that we will be flawlessly and perfectly teaching the Dharma in this world? It's full of demons and ghosts anyway, even in the form of humans. This sister, she brought me some gifts, which is in the likeness of Buddha's Sarira. Yeah, from China. I said, you don't have to offer me anything. Why? I offer it to the temple because they need it more. So she said, no, no, this person uh, met me specially in some circumstance, and he told me that it's only for you. I asked her, how does he know who I am anyway? I never met him, and he doesn't know me. He never met me. So she said, no, he knows your name, and she told me my name. The name is not one that the worldwide people know. He knew it. I didn't ever know him. And he said his name is Mahakajipa. Oh, I have goosebumps even now. He said his name is Kajipa, and my name is so and so. He mentioned that name, which is supposed to be one of the Buddha's disciples in Buddha's time. <laughs> the whole world doesn't know that name that I have. I don't want to tell you. What for should I tell you any name? How would you know anyway? How could I prove it to you? Yeah? So I am very grateful to him. And I forgot to thank him all this time. I was uh, just like uh, taken aback and surprised. And uh, she talked about her stuff, you know, experience, and meditation, uh, result, praising me and thanking me, all that. And I was just saying, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, like that, is that so? And then I had to go to do my job as a retreat <laughs> instructor in that center in Montong, in France, yeah? And so I, I left, I had to go to do my job, talking to you guys at that time. We had retreats a lot. Almost every day I appeared to talk to you guys. And we also had retreats, so we could not talk a lot. And, but I just remember, she said, his name is Kajipa, and your name is so-and-so. And Kajipa, or when she told me, I just kind of registered it, but didn't think too much because I was busy, you know. Just now I, I'm mentioning about it. I have goosebumps because now I think, so I have to thank him anyway, whoever you are, Kajipa, for giving me the value, meaningful gift. Dear Master, a sister who was in contact with, the sister who presented M with Lord Buddha's relics, contacted us and sent us the following message after seeing the recent FN, or Fly In News. We are adding it to the FN for you and all viewers for their fortunate blessing. FN Team with Love. The relics that Maha Kashyapa dedicated to M are not ordinary relics. These are the Sharira of Shakyamuni Buddha. This means that Maha Kashyapa recognized M as the Maitreya Buddha. M also said thanks for the meaningful gift. If you have clairvoyance, you can see the relics radiating light and multiple with many layers, Buddhas flying to heaven from within. A clairvoyant can see the difference even from photos, so you may replace it with the correct photo that the sister gave me. I believe the viewers can receive the blessing from it and the wise and enlightened viewers know the meaning of Maha Kashyapa and why M was given these. I am sorry. I I don't know where it is right now. I have no time. I have to sometimes run for my safety. I can't even have anything with me. Sometimes I have only one pair of clothes on me. When I have to run, I forgot where the gift is right now. I hope that somebody who is taking care of whatever place would take care of it. But I thank him now because I never had a chance to thank him. I don't know who you are. We never met, but thank you for trusting me like that and mentioning my name as one of the Buddha's foremost disciples. I thank you so much, very, very much. And may the Buddhas in all the directions bless you. My God Almighty bestow on you all the best. 
and your loved ones as well. And may you reach whatever noble goal you intend to do. Your name just gives me goosebumps. Yeah. Because uh, Kajif is one of the deeply revered uh, monks and successor of the Buddha. And he is perfect in every way. So I thank you for telling me that name again. Even if you have chosen it as your name out of reverence, just like in Christianity, people choose their name Jesus or Paolo or Simon, just in reverence to the saints who followed Lord Jesus. May you keep that holy name forever. May the Buddha bestow on you so much blessing and wisdom, the way he did to the revered Mahakaji Bodhisattva. Thank you. And thank you also, the sister. We didn't have much time to talk about that at that time because I was always busy. You always came when we were in retreat and that's why you came. And we never had much time to talk about that. I thank you for being a good follower of the truth. I thank you for bringing me that gift, which I treasure. And I carry it in different countries for some time, but the last time I had to run and I could not uh, carry it with me. It may be somewhere in my old uh, cave, somewhere before. If I have a chance, I will find it again. Don't worry, okay? Anyway, it's not about the relic. It's a symbol of the Buddha, of his uh, holiness and compassion for the world. I took it into my heart already, so I will never lose it. Thank you. Just if you see that man ever again, please give him a bow for me, you know, as if you bow to Mahakaji. One bow, two bow, three bows, as many bows as you want to thank him for the precious uh, gift, even though it doesn't mean anything uh, money-wise, but it's more than the best jewelry in the world for me. I thank you. Thank you and thank him a lot, a lot, a lot. Please tell him that if you ever see him again. Uh, I mean that to all human beings, animal beings, and even trees and uh, everything on this planet. That's why I'm trying to serve all of you. Thank you.